Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be learning a little bit about data visualization with Altair, a module that is available for Python. So let's see what we can learn. So we are here inside Jupyter Notebook and we are going to learn a little bit about Altair as I've already mentioned. And so, like I mentioned already, Altair is a data visualization module or library that is available inside Python. There's nothing unique about it except for two things. One is surprisingly easy to use and to make rather complex uh, tools or, 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 or visualizations. And also, you are uh, able to include interaction in the plot. So, what we're going to do here is we're going to go through setting up some data. So I'm going to use some data called Duncan. So this is my first line of code right here. And so I'm going to import pandas. That'll become important later. And we're going to uh, take something from a module called pi data set and import data. And then from there, we're going to take our data set called Duncan. We're going to store it as DF. This is right here in line three. And we're just going to display it here in line four. So here's my data. So basically, this data is looking at people's occupation um, the type, so it can be professional, working class, or blue collar, excuse, white, cl white collar or blue collar, excuse me. We also have here income, education level, and prestige. You know, probably on a scale of one to 100 here. So before we get into our basic plots, we're gonna make a scatter plot and a scatter plot and a bar graph. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna talk a little bit about some ideas about grammar of, of graphics. And so, what Altair does is that it takes it keeps it takes into account the ideals of grammar or graphics, which is where you have to deal with okay, what is your data? Okay, aesthetics. What kind of visual picture or visualization are you going to use? The scale, st statistical transformation, like for example regression. The type of objects you're going to use, whether it's a dot or a circle or a square or a triangle, or whatever. Fossetting and of course the coordinate system, whether it's x, y, or some other coordinate system. So down here we finally have our first plot keeping in mind these ideas. And so you have to import the Altair module. It may not already be on your system, so you will have to install it, whether going through uh, the, the graphic user interface in Windows or uh, using PIP if you like to use Linux or whatever. And so we import Altair. We're going to uh, import it as ALT. And then you can see right here in line two, this is where the fun begins. So I call, of course, the actual you know module I'm using here, Alt. And the first thing is my data. So it's a chart of my data. I saved it as DF, that's what I did. And then here is the aesthetic. Um, the, uh, the, we're gonna use a, a bar because we're gonna make a bar graph. And then the encode is where I tell it what my X and Y variables are going to be, as an, or, yeah, as, a, as here, as an example. So we're gonna use type. So they can, remember, remember, type can be working class. It could be white collar. It could be blue collar or it can be a uh, professional. And so that's my X, this is a categorical variable. And then on my Y axis, it's the level of prestige for the job. So if I press control enter, and notice also how I capture everything inside these parentheses right here for the encode part. I press control enter, and you can clearly see that we have a nice uh, narrow bar graph. Now, of course, there are options to make this a little bit wider. It's kind of narrow right now, but that's really not the purpose of the video. And so you can see we have these um, nice bar graphs, very simple to use, very easy um, for beginners, actually, in my opinion. And of course, we can make the bars different colors. We can, we can make it a lot wider. But again, those are options that you can explore on your own. For our next one here, we're going to use some circles here. And so this time it looks like we're going to make a scatter plot, I believe, and we're comparing education and prestige. So we go through the same process here, but notice how instead of using a bar, we're using mark, dot mark circle. That's the difference here. And so we press control enter, and you can see we got a nice scatter plot right here. Again, yes, you can add a title and you can you know, make a legend if you desire and you can manipulate other things, but we're just trying to provide you with a basic experience of what's happening here. And so you can see there's a strong correlation, it appears, between education and prestige. As education increases, prestige generally increases at a similar rate, if you will. 
moving on, we're going to talk about how you can add color. And so in this particular spot right here, everything's mostly the same. You've seen this information in lines one through three, but what's new here, excuse me, what's new here is right here in line four. What's happening now is that as we make our dots, we're going to color them by the categorical variable of type. So remember, we had white collar, blue collar, and professional. And so this add allows you to add an additional dimension to your scatter plot to communicate with your audience. So I press control enter right here, and you can see this is the same scatter plot as before, but now we have the additional information of the type. So again, you can see blue collar jobs, they tend to have less education and also less prestige. But then as you move higher and higher, you get more into the professional levels. And you can see that as education and prestige go up, there's a definite change in the, the type of job a person is working. But there's a lot of overlap between professional and working class, or excuse me, white collar, for uh, quite, a, quite a while here. Now moving to the next example here. Now this time, again, all this code is mostly the same. You've seen lines one through four already. All dot chart, that's how you, you, you pull your data, dot mark circles, so we're using circles, then encode. The XY is gonna be education and prestige. Color is gonna be type, so we know what the type is. But now we're adding size of income. So in other words, the more income that a person has, the bigger their bubble will be. Again, this is just another way to capture information that you might need in your in your chart as you're displaying things so i press Control enter and you can see the more money the bigger the bubble if you will so for example this person right here if you can see me uh they have a blue, blue collar job you know they have a high degree of prestige but a limited income and you can also see that they make uh, a lot more money uh than maybe some of their peers in that particular uh category now, what we're going to do now is go right here to regression. So for regression, again, you know, we don't have time to explain all the ideals behind that, but we're trying to get an insight into the relationship among the, the various um, variables that might be in the plot. So again, most of this is the same. We already call pandas uh, and maybe already call NumPy. Maybe probably don't need those. But if you look right here, we're still doing, we're saving the chart this time. So we're gonna save our chart as chart, you know, lowercase c, if you will. And what we're doing here is we're using a point and we're going to encode this information. So education is going to be on our X axis, prestige on our Y axis. We're going to color by type. Notice that call, the, the colon in part right there, that's necessary in this particular instance. And we're gonna have a tooltip by income. This adds some interaction. This will make more sense in a second. And so that's how we set up chart. And then once we're done with that, we're going to add our statistical transformation right here. Okay, statistical transformation and then also the actual aesthetics for the transformation. So we press control enter. And you can see right here that instead of using dots, we have points, so they're like empty circles. And you can see our nice little uh, line here. Everything's worked out. Now with the interaction, when you hover over it, you're gonna get an ideal of their income. That's kind of what's happening here. And so we're gonna talk more about interaction in a second. But notice this nice line here. And of course, you could, actually to, you could actually do the regression analysis if you desired to try to find out what exactly the correlation is between these variables. Now moving on, if you wanna make multiple plots, what you do here is, again, all this you've seen before. There's nothing new here. You just give your plot a name, press the equal sign, and set up your information that you want to store inside it. So this first plot is gonna be, it appears as a scatter plot between education and prestige, and we're also going to include uh, type using color. And then the second plot starting in line six, we have again, we're saving, uh, or excuse me, we're doing income by prestige this time, and we also are coloring by type as well. Now in line 11, this is the new information. We're going to call the plots, but we're going to use this little pipe right here to have both plots be displayed simultaneously or at the same time. Now this particular symbol is found right above your enter key on your keyboard if you press down the shift. 
you'll see it looks like the backward slash and then if you press down the shift you'll see that little pipe right there so if I press control enter you can see right here I have both my plots being made at the same time and I can look at both of them as I so desire and I can see the the type here the um, the legend is right here off to the right in the upper upper right hand corner and I can look at this information now this last plot uh, excuse me plot uh, first we're going to make it and then I'm going to show you how you can pull the HTML from it so let me go ahead and make it now you can't see it because I have to call it interact and so here it is down here and so again you saw this with the regression if I hover over it I can see the income for the different dots now if I want to include this in HTML um, there's several things I need to do I could do it like this where I click on the little bubbles here and I can say view the source and then I can take the HTML code for my own purposes so that's one way to do that and so once you save the HTML what happens is is that you can look at it by itself so here I'm just inside my browser and you can see that now I have all the interaction like this now this is really really powerful because I've done this with like d3.js you know JavaScript and it works but it's really complicated if you're not a strong coder if you're not familiar with that but using Python's tools you're able to pull all this information without having to uh, do it inside an HTML browser or, or using any kind of other tools this is the actual code right here you can see for yourself all this is done automatically for you and let me tell you this is a lot of work uh, doing it other ways now the information right here let me back up a little bit the information right here in line 7 this is where you save your plot right here and so once you save it it'll be available on your computer inside your working directory the reason uh, let's see your interact plot dot save so this is the the method we're using and so this is the the name of what we're gonna call it and then the embed options is SVG and the action is false the actions being set to false makes these bubbles disappear if you look right here you can see up here that you don't have the, the bubbles because if I'm putting this on a website you know I don't want them you know you know downloading the code or whatever so I just remove that by setting the actions to false right here so there's a lot of really cool things, a lot of great advantages to the Altair data visualization mo module slash library, whatever you would like to call it. And there's a lot of great opportunities here for you to do some really complex things where the computer does all the work for you and then you can copy and paste these things into your websites um, for whatever purposes. So, you know, you could put this HTML into your, uh, comp your, um, your file that you're, you're working with if you want to put it on your blog and then it'll process all this for you automatically just like you can see right here all right so let's see if we can kind of review what we talked about and conclude this video so in this video we learned about how to manipulate data for with the the Altair visualization module that's available within Python so we learned about bar graphs and scatter plots we learned about regression you know how to include categorical variables in your scatter plots. We learned about interaction, where you can hover over different things and reveal more information for the uh, the user. Uh, we also learned about how you can export the HTML code, which is right here if you really desire it, and then you can copy and paste this into whatever um, website you're developing and make things much easier for you. So, my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching and take care.